This video was brought to you by Marcus Biel, Elbil Mac, a battery planner, stolen by Camp Power and Biel Componente. Okay, here we have yet another Scania. You can barely see it. It's a military car, military truck with, um, I don't think we count um, ground clearance in centimeters. We count it in inches or feet with chains on all four wheels. <laughs> there is nothing electric with this truck except for electric start. That's it. So this is really heavy duty. Uh, it's just for fun, supposedly, that we're gonna ride this. Um, I thought I was going to get a ride in this. Supposedly, they want me to drive it. So I have never driven a truck like this before. I, I know how to drive manual, that's it. But supposedly, we will not do much uh, gear shift. So we just, um, let's see, um, clutch, start the engine. <laughs> Hopefully there's not too much vibration on the camera now. Um, and then we just put it in second gear, right? Yeah. Uh, straight forward. Uh, there. And the brakes. Um, this one. Oh, okay. Take it, pull it up. Yeah. There. And then and we go that. that way. And then I just, uh, now supposedly I just release the clutch. Yeah. And then just oh, 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 okay. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. It was a bit harsh. Okay. <laughs> I was, wait, huh? Well, yeah. why, why did it jump like that? Oh, because we're in second gear. Yeah. Okay. But that's very long gear. <laughs> so, all right. So we're supposed to go on this uh, off-road uh, track. Um, okay, okay, there we go. So it doesn't go that fast. And then where do we go now? To the left. To the left there, okay. Yeah. So how fast should I go now? Or uh, on the green span. On okay, the, the green. Yeah. All right, all right. All right. See, you see, last time I off-roaded, that was in a Tesla Model X. I broke some stuff. Wait, do I go left or right? Right. Right. Okay. But this truck is built for this shit. Yeah. So, oh yeah. Let's see. I just have to remember that we have some wide car, a wide truck, and also there is some, there is some significant axle uh, dis distance. Oh, I need, I see, I need to be more to the left here. Not used to this. Oh, but uh, it can climb up the hill like a goat. <laughs> so yeah, of course, we, wow, look at that. There is, wait, I mean, huh? How does it go? Oh, okay, oh, oh, look at that how it can climb that shit. Okay, so I was told to not clutch, just drive. Okay, it has some, it has some engine braking. Well, how am I doing now, so far? Uh, yeah, fine, so fine. far. So far. And here we have to have some speed. Okay, speed, okay, speed, speed. Power! Just like Jeremy Clarkson. <laughs> Get up the hill. All right, I'm a little bit past the green, okay. <laughs> Good old, is this diesel engine? Yeah. How many, how big, how many? Uh, 215 horsepower. 215 horsepower, but uh, how big is the engine? Nine liters. Nine, lit nine liters? What the heck? Nine liters. Uh, how many uh, cylinders? Six. Six, uh, okay. Is it a straight six? Yeah. <laughs> and it's Scania. I didn't know that Scania had military trucks. Whoa, look at this. This is crazy. Okay, just go. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, I need to stare a bit. <laughs> this is actually even more fun than those electric toys. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, give it, give it, okay. <laughs> what the heck? Oh, 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 I see there are some trucks there. I need to, okay, I can get in the dip. Yeah. Okay, there, there, there. It's okay. Lots of chains. Is it permanent all wheel drive? Okay, four wheel drive. So, I actually thought it would be noisier than this. It's not that noisy. Okay, maybe because we're driving kind of slow. But wow, this is proper off roading. Except for that, okay, they clear the snow and stuff. But there is no road here normally. No? No. Okay, no road. <laughs> because where we're going, we don't need any roads. <laughs> or with this vehicle, we don't need roads. Oh, let me see. Wow. Oh. Interesting. And he said, okay. <laughs> what, 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 what
<laughs> Just hold on the steering wheel. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, keep at the speed. Okay, get this, get some speed. No, speed. No, take it easy. And take it easy. Okay. okay. And then now you can guess. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, it bounces like a boat. It needs to have the suspension. Oh, oh, this is the shape you were talking about. Oh, it needs to have the suspension travel like a true off-roader, like a Jeep. Yeah, Jeep can just go home. Scania, man. Sc <laughs> it's crazy because when you're driving here, you see the middle, the like the the dip in the middle. It is so tall. <laughs> the snow in the middle there. <laughs> oh shit. Uh, uh. So okay, what I've learned from off-roading is that okay after my mistake is that when you go downhill, don't brake. You have to have some speed. When we go down, in, uh, when we go up that one, uh -huh. just hold the steering wheel straight ahead because okay. we are going to look at the sky. And then you use only the brakes when you go down. Oh shit! But you have to have some speed. Then up we go up there. Oh shit! What the heck is this? What the heck is this? Ah! Ah! <laughs> just straight ahead. Okay. And you break down. Maybe. Okay, break a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but those chains, they really dig. You see, there are some G-forces there that my camera bag is rolling down here. But this truck can just grip. Like, like it is so unreal with these chains. These chains, are these regular chains or is it some kind of... Oh, it's a uh, regular snow chains for this four-wheel. Okay, but can you use these chains on public roads? No, oh, I don't think it will be too, too big. Okay. But man, there's like heavy chains of grip on the snow. So my, like, huh? Like, according to my my sense of physics, we're not supposed to be able to just roll down like this. It's supposed to slide all over the place. But here we just grips like it was on dry tarmac. <laughs> oh, wow. But I, do I drive slow, slow now? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, okay. Ah, speed is fine. Alright, oh, alright. So, good thing we have an instructor here, otherwise I'll get lost, man. Just like at that enough uh, uh, off-road track. Well, I didn't get lost, but I uh, made lots of uh, stupid mistakes. <laughs> but what I was going to say is that when you go downhill, you have to get... You, you need to get, keep the wheels running. If you brake and you lock the wheels, you have no control. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, I, I I agree. This is way more fun than driving those trucks <laughs> on the reg regular tra track <laughs> road. Oh, oh man! Is that a choke? No, that's the stop. And oh, that's the stop. <laughs> All right, that's it. <laughs> Okay, we have to test this. Uh, since this is also scanning out, this is toys for boys, toys for big boys. This is not electric, but um, it's pretty cool. We have, um, you know, this is for timbering, right? And normally there'll be a little hut in the back there where you can sit and, and uh, do your loading, unloading of, of, uh, of timber. But uh, now they have camera mounted there. And there is a VR glass. Uh, can you open? Espen, can you open up and you can see the dude with the VR? <laughs> this is this is so science fiction. It is still quite new. You see that? You have just VR glass. I'm supposed to do this. I need to try it. I have never tried it before. <laughs> I'll try this. Uh -huh, okay. Oh, oh. Yeah. Okay. Let me see if I can. I've never done this before. Oh, I'm getting close to it now. Let me see. Go on, um, open the grapple a little oh, bit. Oh, let me see. Okay, open the grapple. Let me see. What what was that again? Uh, uh, there, 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 there. Okay. Let's see. The, oh, 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 okay, okay. And then we go down. Okay, we go down. Um, the, oh, 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 the other way. The other way. Whoa! I took it. <laughs> okay, now we see. Uh, then I have to go up. Yeah. Well, I had to squeeze it harder, maybe. There. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, like a boss. Let me see. Yeah. Um, and then uh, if you want to rotate. Yeah, just oh, oh, yeah. Oh, let me see. Um, we want to go maybe a bit up. Yeah, take it up in the sky. Wow. <laughs> this is so. This is so cool. 
We can do this on flat. It's like playing a video game. Yeah, just exact. Oh, exactly. Oh, I, I did smoother movements. Yeah, yeah, no worries, no worries. Wow, this is some awesome shit, man. <laughs> Okay, let's see. And then, uh, if wanna if wanna release it, I can just try to open the grapple now, right? Yeah, it's a safe round. So just open and let it go to the ground. And this is so cool because I can just turn my head to check. Oh, yeah, there's no one here. And then I open the grapple. And there you go. Boom. <laughs> okay. Awesome. All right. All right. All right. Now we are in uh, Ascania R660, a V8 diesel. Just want to experience how is it with a diesel when it comes to noise and vibration and so on. So it has 3,300 newton meter torque and 660 new uh, 660 horsepower. So it is the second most powerful uh, V8 from Scania. So Scania they actually have proper V8, whereas uh, Volvo they only go for this puny six cylinder straight. <laughs> And uh, yeah, according to Espen here, the, the V8 has a better sound. So now we're gonna go uphill, eight degree, uh, no, no, eight percent grade. It's fairly steep. We're doing 55 kilometers per hour. Sixty. Uh, I think you can see it, right? Okay, let me change some of the settings here on the camera. Okay, so it's, um, yeah, you can hear the noise when you go uphill, along with the turbo wind. I think there's a bunch of Scania cars now just doing the tests. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like Scania trucks. Okay, the last bit of the test now is to then ride electric uh, truck and on public road this time. The same route we went with a fossil, but this time we, we don't have any uh, cargo with us. Uh, it's just a little bit of logistics here, but we still get the same impression. We're going uphill now, cruising at 80 kilometers per hour. And let me see if I can show you guys the numbers here. It's a bit hard to see. Maybe, oh, oh sorry. Uh, oh, oh. But okay, I can tell you that with load, with um, 40 tons, was 40, right? With, 40 tons of load, I mean total weight was 40 tons with the whole truck and the, um, the consumption on this test route was around 2,000 watt hour, well, 2,080 watt hour per kilometer. So yeah, it is roughly 10 times higher than a passenger car, but the weight here is roughly 20 times more than a passenger car. So in that regard, it is still relatively efficient and also it was minus 16 degrees Celsius, maybe even colder. So, yeah, we've seen today it's been even colder, minus 20 degrees Celsius. So, yeah, very nice. And then we're now going up the hill, silent like a ninja compared to the fossil. So, uh, the only thing I, I see, you guys probably see it also on the camera, is that it tends to bounce a bit. That's because we don't have any load in the back. So the, the more load and the longer the uh, everything is here, the trailer, then it becomes more stable. Well, anyway, that was the last session. We are back here at uh, the airport and there is the truck. Yeah, it's actually going to be driven uh, quite some distance now. So, all right, so I'm done over here. Now I just have to get back home. So here's the Kia EV9 sitting here. I, I preheated, I hope that it works. Yeah, I hear the fan is going here. And the louvers are open. So, uh, yeah, I connected to the app, but it's not always clear to see what the heck is going on. I don't see any feedback on cabin temperature, but oh, I can tell you that it is nice and warm in here. 22 degrees Celsius. Oh. Okay. Well, I have to start the thing. We should have enough juice to go back home, right? We have, oh, we have 80%, no problem. All right, let's see, we are 160 kilometers away from Yesheim. Oh, the car created this outline of uh, what is realistic uh, range. So it claims we will arrive at 26%, all right? But then, hmm, so we've been sitting here uh, all day, but the battery is not that cold. I wonder if it uh, did preheat. Yeah, it must have pre preheat a little bit and we'll be stationary. I didn't check that, of course, but okay. So 
I guess we can go now and we can see what kind of consumption we get on the way back. driving along Mjösen and over here it's only minus 15 degrees, no, minus 14 degrees Celsius. So yeah, I've decided to uh, take some charging tests before I go home. So I want to test some V2, V3 supercharger and also Ionity. So I activated the preheating, you can do that manually. It's now pulling 4.4 kilowatt and the battery is heating up slowly. Uh, yeah, it's probably the big size battery, but I uh, feel like it's going yeah, a bit slow. Hmm. Okay, hopefully we get enough heat uh, to get some okay speed at the supercharger at least. We are now at the chem power chargers at Nebenes. And uh, yeah, this is interesting. We actually arrived with 40% and we have even been preheating. So hmm, this makes me wonder if I could actually make it back uh, to Jessheim without uh, the recharge we had. But okay, anyway, look here. Um, the after recharge, uh, after charging has not been reset. You see, uh, this is from Oslo, oh, sorry, from from Yesheim this morning. This wait, uh, this is from Trysil. <laughs> yeah, this has been automatically reset. This you can reset that reset yourself, and then uh, no wait, huh? Wait, you can you can reset after charge. That that is strange. No, no yeah, what what happened? It's, I saw, I could have sworn I saw the whole okay to reset. Okay, yeah, it, it, it popped up. Okay, whatever. <laughs> this trip meter should reset automatically and you should not be able to reset it yourself. Uh, okay, whatever. But um, you see that preheating is still active. It's still pulling only 4.4 kilowatt. In my opinion, uh, a big battery like this should have at least six kilowatt maybe even nine you know uh, bmw ix and ix3 they have nine kilowatt battery heat the tesla can go up to 15 kilowatt because it uses heat pump along with the motors so um uh, we only have four to 13 degrees celsius right now so uh let's see what kind of speed we get then okay let's see this is you know 800 volt car so you see that uh, the on like onboard converter what they were in the, these korean cars they will request 450 volt and then transform it higher for the battery pack but let me see it should say uh wait where does it say it no there, there you see uh if you switch over to english here you see that it says that vehicle limits yeah so uh and then this is branded as 150 kilowatt so I'm not sure how many amps. It should be 300 amp. So it's pulling 170 amp right now. It should cap at 300 eventually. It's just slowly doing a wrap up now. 200 amp. No, wait, wait, I forgot. Maybe they only request 200 amp for some reason. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure you can get, you can get 300 amp of this in other cars, but yeah, for some reason, the Korean cars, they only request 200 amp and that becomes only 90 kilowatt hour per hour <laughs> let's check out what's going on inside the car then All right only 81 82 kilowatt going into the battery and you see that the voltage is only 570 so if we slice this in half it will be uh, 285 volt you know in like a 400 volt system so this is like i don't know uh, uh it's not really a, a true 800 volt car but okay, let's move over to the supercharger and see what we can get there. And then on the V2 supercharger, it doesn't seem to work. It just, yeah, I tried twice now and I say, get the same problem. Lost connection to charger, so yeah. 
this is the hassle with uh, M with eGMP platform is that it struggles to work with supercharger. It should at least work on V3, but uh, with really low speed. So um, let me see, next one, let's try hypercharger then. Well, this is good. We have a non-shirt stall now. Uh, yeah, the Satis EV moved. And you see that we have 145 kilowatts from the charger, 150-ish. And then here it jumps a bit up and down, but it's trying to heat the battery under ideal condition when we have at least 25 degrees Celsius in the battery here. Uh, and at 40 degrees, oh, sorry, 40 percent, we should get around 200 kilowatts. So the battery is simply too cold right now. Well, okay, let's move over to Ionity. I want to see the speed over there. We are now at Ionity, and man, what the heck? So there is around uh, uh, 10 kilometers from uh, Nebenes to here. And I fire up the battery heater the moment I started driving. But the battery almost, I mean, it goes up really slow, the battery temperature. So, yeah, I mean, it is minus 17 degrees Celsius outside, but this is where we need proper battery heating power. So 4.5 kilowatt is not going to cut it, man. We need more power. Well, I have, um, I have the plaid now. Uh, that I borrow. Maybe I should do a side-by-side -side test where I start both batteries with, I don't know, zero degrees Celsius and then see how fast they preheat. Yeah. Hmm. Wow, but when we are charging, we are he heating up quite quickly. That means that there must be some leftover heat from the uh, charging process. So you see, we are at 170 kilowatt now at uh, yeah, 21 degrees Celsius. So the magic number is probably 25 degrees Celsius. Yeah, so uh, for these cars, you might cold gate uh, slightly in the beginning, as long as you have some preheating, uh, I mean, preheat before fast charging right in the screen. And then you will get uh, pretty good speed. Uh, yeah, after maybe five, 10 minutes of charging. Last stop for today is uh, V3, V4 supercharger. And this is a new way of uh, plugging in. You just back up against the uh, stalls. I think you're supposed to park like here, but whatever. You know, we have car with charge port on the wrong side, which is the right side. Should have been left side with the right side. But okay. Um, so interesting is that um, you see we have 20 to 33 degrees Celsius here. It's not optimal at this state of charge to get maximum speed. But if I want to preheat the battery further, it's not possible. You know, the battery, this display here, it either says uh, too cold or it says suitable. It's not saying mid or whatever. And the icon never shows you any scale. It's just an icon apparently. But when you try to do this, activate, it says that battery conditioning is not available. Battery, what? Man, I hate the systems where you're supposed to read a long message and then it stays up for just, <laughs> what, dude, why did this even pass a beta version? It should have been stopped there. Like, dude, just keep the message on for slightly longer or even have an okay. But so it's at least it's, it claims that battery temperature is already optimized. Okay, so let's see what kind of speed we get over here then. Oh yeah, let's see. Oh, 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 we're actually getting 60 kilowatt. Wow. This must be a new record because with the EV6 on V3 supercharger, at least previously when I tried, uh, uh, yeah, well, that was a while ago, maybe six months ago, I got only around 40 kilowatt, 38 kilowatt. It was dog slow. Now we can actually get proper speed on V3 supercharger, but it still has to do the conversion between 400 volt to whatever. So, hmm, I think I need to do more testing here. But yeah, this is great. Uh, I don't think I will bother testing on uh, the V4 supercharger because right now the limitation is in the high state of charge and also versus the battery temperature. Uh, well, we can sit around and wait until 20 degrees Celsius and see if we get any uh, leap. Yeah, in this, these Korean cars, um, the battery temperature or versus speed is in five degrees Celsius increments. So yeah, wait a little bit and then we see. Wait a minute, look here, 85 kilowatt reported from the app, 85 kilowatt in the screen. That makes sense, right? So the screen still reports, what? And then stopped. And then freaking charging stop. Man, okay, uh, whatever. Uh, I was gonna point out that the battery heater is not active. Yeah, the car figures out that now it's warm enough, so it, it will actually cold gate because we were only getting 70 kilowatt until it stopped. And under ideal condition, you should get at least 90, 100 kilowatt at this state of charge. So yeah, well, this is the, the, the hassle, I guess, that you, you can't get 
optimal speed, but it's, at least it is good enough. Okay, but I think I'm done testing now. All right, we're back home in the garage, and um, yeah, this is interesting. Now, suddenly, after charging has updated and reset automatically, I didn't do nothing. Yeah, no, but really, <laughs> I have not touched the re the after charging. But wait, 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 if you look here at no, wait, not this one. Da, da, da. Here, current trip. Yeah, from Gardimon to home, we have six kilometers. This is current trip. This is from uh, Ionity. Uh, so why did it suddenly reset at Ionity? Ishwajnish! <laughs> okay, well, can I actually reset it? Let me try. Yeah, you can reset after charging. Okay, that also doesn't make any sense. Uh, but okay, anyway. But let me try something here. Okay, look, look, look here. So, uh, battery is now 18 to 29 degrees Celsius. Can we now activate? Yeah, you see, you see. Uh, now it just says low. Yeah, so either it's low or, or it's okay. <laughs> so if I do this, Joop. then we can run the battery heating and then it usually takes uh, about a minute or two until we see stuff going on here i don't know it needs to build the pressure in the in the compressor or some shit but okay we're not going to activate it now so uh, um all right i think we're done with the test but here you see the consumption since uh, yeah since yes same uh, from this morning all the way up to the mountain back again with some preheating towards the end so yeah the car is a bit thirsty but remember that it was quite cold outside so uh, yeah and it also it seems like this temp sensor here doesn't update uh, wait wait but yeah in the garage now how long does it take before before it updates then okay well whatever so yeah so anyway, it was interesting, the Scania event, yeah, and now a little trip, uh, a little bit out of the ordinary, no regular 1000 km challenge or anything, so it was interesting to drive this car, and it's nice and comfy, yeah. But anyway, I think that's going to be it for now, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, as always, thank you for watching, and talk to you later.